YouTube, guys, what is up? It's been a while and I've moved house, as you can see. And this is the reasoning. Ignore that fat pile of mess in the garden because I haven't come around to doing it yet. Now, I'm back with another Bruce List poster design, so I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. This one's called Raw, so let's jump straight into it. So over in Photoshop here, we've got the final design. Now, I feel like this poster completely encompasses my design style from subjects to texture, text layout, and color. Everything along those lines is exactly what I enjoy making. It's exciting to walk you through it, and I'm gonna show you immediately that this is under a a strict grid system. So as always, we're gonna go file new, width 3840, height 4800, and then you wanna change the resolution to 300. Okay, so use these settings just here, press create. Now the first step is gonna be adding in this grid system. Now, there isn't really any specific reason why I've picked this grid system, but I'm gonna show you a few traits that I enjoy to use. So if I use three columns, which I feel like is quite a standard across editorial work, and I'm gonna use the same gutter amount and the same margin amount. Now this is just gonna make sure that everything spaced in each of these sections is even the entire way around. So I've gone for seven rows, and again, 100 pixel gutter. Make sure that you clear these existing guides so you get rid of everything else that's on there, and then press OK here. Now I can paste in our image, because our image is our main subject. So this was from a photographer called Daniel Bausch uh, via Unsplash. If you were just to type in Brutalist Architecture, you're going to find a whole bunch of images like this, and you can work them around. So I'm going to scale this up to fit the entire bounds, and then you can kind of hold shift drag this up and down, try and determine where the kind of vertical placement is going to work the best. So I think if I'm dragging this bottom margin line to the bottom of the canvas, that's probably the best in terms of contrast. It means there's a lot of space. If you consider the building as the area that we're going to put most of the text on for contrast, there's a lot of space and areas that you can implement this in. So if you open up the grid system, these four sections right here are usable to put text in. Same with these four up here. And then we've got these dark contrast areas in the corner here to put even more on. So there's a lot of areas to input text already. These are just a few things that I'd look out for when I'm creating this. So with our image in, my next step is going to be to put in the primary text, which is going to be the headline raw. So I'm going to open up our grid lines and I'm going to type in the word raw. Now I believe this sizing is already based on my reference canvas, so this is going to be correct. Now I'm going to center align this up here. If you can't select this, come into your three dots just here, align to, make sure it's set to canvas. Now I want this to kind of bleed across each side of the canvas. So I'm going to make this slightly bigger and then I'm going to drag this right down to the bottom so that it's also bleeding out the bottom edge. So I think just about here is good. Now the W is kind of formatting a bit weird, so I might try and extend it a bit more and then make sure I've center aligned that again. Yeah, I prefer that. So from this point, I just wanna put a layer mode onto the title so that it kind of has this transparency feature with the background image. So I'm gonna set the layer mode to difference. Now you're gonna see it's gonna let all of this kind of background detail through the text. Now I intend to make this black and white, so what we're gonna do is add a gradient map to layer over these. So come down to adjustments and gradient map make sure you've got your gradient icon selected. And now I've got quite a few presets here. I have one saved, which is black and white just here. And now I'm gonna make sure that this is reversed so that we have the correct colorway. So now I'm gonna show you the color values just in case you wanna copy these directly. Now this is if you come into the kind of pink tints and go down to a, uh, a darker gray, you've got this is 2C, 2A, 2C. And on the white one, bring it down in this kind of greeny blue area. This is the hex code just here. Now revisiting our reference, you can see that we've still got one more image to add as well as the subtitles and body text. So the next step is gonna be adding in this image. Now, as you all know, if you've seen my work for a while, my favorite color scheme I like to use is black, white, and orange. Now I feel like these three colors perfectly complement each other, especially in kind of like brutalist and editorial work. So here I'm gonna paste in this second image and then we're gonna format this into this kind of like black, white, and orange colorway. So I'm gonna base this using the grid lines, uh, not necessarily for width of the rows, more just on placement. So I'm gonna drag this up. I'm gonna make sure that it's lined up with this margin line just here. And I believe I'm gonna repeat the same thing with this row line. So I want it to kind of fit within this row, but I don't want it to extend the entire way across the column. So I'm gonna leave it just here. And I think this placement's good in terms of composition for the whole image. So now I can add in this kind of like orange color over this. And so we're gonna do the same thing with a gradient map. So because I want to add another one, I'm just gonna duplicate this one and then right click and create clipping mask. Now, whatever color we apply to this gradient map is now only gonna to apply to this image. So I want to keep this black value just here. So I'm gonna copy the hex code of this and now I'm gonna add in one of these presets, black to orange color gradients that I have here. Now I want one with quite harsh contrast, but I'm gonna adjust this slightly. So I quite like the contrast on this so that the blacks are very dark. And I also, on this black value, I'm going to paste in the black value we were using. So that it's a bit more coherent and consistent. Now I'm gonna bring this slightly more into the red. There we go. So it's a bit more of a vibrant orange. And I think that color just there is perfect to use. I'm also gonna bring this image up slightly so that we have a little bit less sky showing. Now remember, you might think, okay, you're going out the grid lines or you're not perfectly within these. Now, 
The only reason I do this, I don't want them to constrict me. So that if I'm strictly abiding by the grid lines here, I'm gonna spend too long and almost overthink different considerations when you could just do it on eye. So if I took my margins away, I think this is working completely fine with balance and composition and placement. Whereas if you were really trying to adhere to these lines, it may detriment you slightly and you'll be left overthinking whether you've put it in the right place. So I'm fine with this where it is now. And now we can just add in this kind of subtext and body text. So now I wanted to add in some subtext that was actually applying to these images. So these two images were taken in Serbia and Germany. So I'm going to put in the cities that they were in. One of them was Bosham or Bosham. I'm not sure how to pronounce that properly. So I'm going to type that first one in. So what I want here is a few kind of like spread out words. So I'm going to go for Brutalist Monuments. I'm going to make this size 16. And then let's say across the other side of this grid, I'm going to right align it for the right margin and type in Monuments. Now I don't want these in the same line. I want this kind of slightly down. Now, once again, this does not have to stick to one of these grid lines. You can kind of just do it by eye based on where you are and based on layout. And now from this point, I'm gonna line this up with this grid. I'm gonna type in Bosham. Now I want this kind of separated from the rest of the text. So that's why I'm adding in these three lines. And then just here, Belgrade. So Belgrade being the capital of Serbia, which is where this image was taken, and then Bosham in Germany for the background image. So now I think that the text placement is working as this is what I used in the original. I'm going to swap Belgrade and Bosham, not for any particular reason, more just to adhere to the original reference. But when you're lining these up with grid lines, for example, you see how these lines kind of are overarching the level or the base of this text. You want to make sure that the text is on the baseline rather than those. Same thing with this one, top of the baseline across the grid line. So now here, this gray color is contrasting really well against the sky background, whereas this one, it's readable, it's okay, it's not optimal though. So what I'm going to do is highlight this and change this to another gray found within the image. So we're going to go for a lighter gray, but we don't want it almost like white. Like I feel, I think for me, this is too bright. So perhaps we can gather a kind of darker tone from the sky or from down in this raw text. I think just about there is good for me. So now we've got good contrast for readability, but it's not taking too much attention away from the image and the background image. So now back in the reference here, you can see we've got this body text to add, which I'm gonna do now. And I've taken the same kind of approach where we stick with a grid system and spread it evenly across the contrasting parts of the image. So the first one is gonna be lined up with this grid line here, this kind of section. So I'm gonna paste the text in. Now, the way I've generated this is I've used ChatGBT to kind of take these two images and write some descriptive paragraph text, either about brutalist architecture or about these specific buildings. So now again, that is, uh, I believe the same kind of color as our Bosham text here, let me just double check. I want this to be readable. So this may have to be slightly brighter. So we're gonna go for that kind of tone there. Now I'm gonna paste in our second paragraph. So we're gonna put it within this section, paste it in here, and I'm going to and I'm going to bring in this left-hand margin to kind of stretch across a few lines within this box. So there we go. So once it's kind of evenly placed, that's better there. This word two is kind of like sticking out unevenly though. So I just kind of wanna adjust that. There we go, that works much better. We've got this descending line kind of in line with the background window, which works for placement. Now from this point, make sure that that is matching the same text color as our previous one. So it's gonna eye drop that. And if I zoom out a bit, I can still read all of the text. So that's how I know that this is gonna be legible. Now just adding in that final paragraph, I'm gonna shape it into this text box just here, paste my text in, and now I can play around with the kind of scaling of this. I wanna make this across maybe one or two more lines. Once again, I want the kind of optimal placement. That's good. The lines kind of end around the same area. The other option for this would be to use the kind of justify on both sides feature in your text panel or perhaps in your paragraph panel. Yeah, just here. So selecting this icon here and it's gonna spread it across left to right, but I wanted to just use left aligned in this. So now I'm gonna bring this text box across one more line. So it's across four instead of three, just to kind of match the sizing of the remaining text box. Bring that right down to the margin line. And there we go, body text in. Now once again, zoom out, make sure that you can read it all. I think this all looks great. We can still read all of the text at this scale as well. Now I'm just gonna add in this kind of like lower banner going across. Now this is just for a good amount of contrast to kind of shape the layout. And I'm gonna show you this without. Well, without it is just gonna be this. And I think it feels less structured. And it's something about adding this kind of like vertical banner being small and then putting a bit of contrast on it. It brings a lot more structure to the whole piece. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool, my shape tool, and now I can drag this across the bottom margin. Just gonna make sure this is sized properly. And then for color, we're gonna come onto our fill tab, select our kind of hue icon just here, and then we can select the sky and see how that goes. I think we might go slightly brighter. So if I cycle through my recently used colors, that's gonna be too bright. So let me select the sky and then tone it up slightly. There we go. I think that might also still be too bright. 
Yeah, so let's bring the tone down of this slightly more, come back onto our selector, just drag this down, play around with this for a little while, make sure that you get the right option. Make sure your stroke is off as well. There we go, that's looking good. So now for the text. Uh, if I was to use my type tool here, it's gonna select into our raw text, so I could either lock that or I'm just gonna type it somewhere else and drag it in. So I'm gonna use my kind of like four text tags. So I'm just gonna put my name in there and I'm gonna make sure that this is set to kind of like one of the darker grays in the image. So that immediately, pretty good color selection there. Now this is gonna be the same typeface, owner's wide using a different weight. Now a general rule with weights if you're going down in scale is if you drop two weights and sizes, it's gonna give you kind of like optimal readability. So this text size and weight here is perfect for not bringing too much attention away from the rest of the assets in the image. Okay, now across all of these columns, I'm gonna type in Brutalist, change this one to Raw, Brutalist, and then on the far right, we'll go for Poster Design. Now I'm gonna make sure that this one is right justified and then bring it in there. Now I think they're spread across quite evenly. I might make these slightly smaller. So they're 10 point right now, if I make them eight point, actually now we're gonna go for nine point just in between. And then with them all selected, I want them center aligned with this rectangle at the bottom. I believe they are already, so that is fine. Make sure Brutalist is right up against this margin, same with War. And there we go. Now with all of the assets in, we can just work on a few texturing elements and just finalizing the poster design. Now before adding the texture layers, we need to texture the actual assets individually. So for text, we're gonna add this kind of displacement map, which is gonna roughen the edges and kind of blend it slightly more with the background. So the first step is we want to group all of the text assets that are similarly sized. So for example, these kind of like subheading text sizing here. So those four words, I'm going to come down onto our text panel, grab all four of those and then group them and just name them subhead. Now we want to group our three body text icons. So group them using command G, name this body text and our rectangle and our four text at the bottom, group these and name it bottom banner. So I'm going to show you the method to doing this once and then I will just do the rest myself just to save us some time because I'll show you exactly how it's done. So for the text raw, the first step we're going to do is create a duplicate. And now I'm going to hide our original and I'm going to convert our duplicate into a smart object. Now from this point, we're going to come up to filter, distort and displace. I want to set the scale on this to quite high. So a standard for text is between 10 and 20. For this one, I want to set it to maybe 50 just because the text is larger and we want a more distinguished effect. Now I'm gonna select my film dust texture, which I have here. I'm gonna link this in the description below. Now I know a few people were saying that it uh, only saves as a JPEG for some reason. So what I'll do is I'll upload this to a Google Drive and I'll put that link in the description so you can get it. So now you wanna select it as a PSD file and I'm gonna press open here. And you're gonna see it's gonna add this distressed edges, but is also going to shift it a few pixels across. So because I use 50 as the scaling, it's gonna move it 50 pixels or kind of around that range. So what I'm gonna do is use my arrow keys and I'm gonna keep hitting these until it kind of aligns back with the original text. So the method to do it, reveal your original and then just keep shifting these until these are effectively aligned. So this doesn't have to be perfect, but obviously try and get it as close as you can. So just about there is good. Now I can hide the original again. And now as we zoom in, you can see that we've got these really nicely distressed edges that really kind of work into this brutalist theme. And now I'm gonna repeat this same step on all three of these folders, except I'm just gonna use a lower value of probably around 20. Now, the reason I'm just gonna do this myself is because I have this saved as a preset action. So if I come over to dust displace 20, I can press play on this with my subhead folder and it's just gonna do it for me. And when I hide the subhead layer, I now have these as distressed text assets. So once again, I mean, I can just rename this subhead. The original is already hidden. Select my body text folder, press play on my action pack hide the body text. It's just gonna repeat this same step across all, everything that's within the folder. And then the last one on the bottom banner. Now for this one, you can see that because the text is smaller, it's gonna offer a bit of a stronger effect, which we don't want. So I'm gonna come into this displace just here, change the scale to 10 on each, reselect that same texture. Now, because it's on 10, I'm gonna to need to reshift this back into place. So once again, use the arrow keys, make sure it's kind of aligned with those margins you've set earlier, hide the original, and there we go, it's good to go. Now, I wanna also add this kind of distress feature around the edges of the image. So the step to do this is because if I displace it straight away, it's gonna kind of distort the image itself. We don't want that because we just want it around the edges. So if you select your image, command click it to create the outline and then mask it. What you can then do is select the mask to displace. So you can select the mask, come up to filter, stylize and diffuse. Now this is gonna add this kind of like roughened edge just on the outline rather than across the whole image. So I'm gonna do that twice, zoom out, and that looks pretty good. So now with two diffuse layers on there, we can zoom out and we've got the roughened edges and the roughened text all across the canvas. So now we can just add in our texture overlays. Now the first one I'm gonna drag in is a black market copy scan. Now this is gonna add in these horizontal scan lines, which kind of fits within the theme of this structure and Bruce List design. And I love using these on anything black and white or gritty. 
So I'm gonna set this to overlay. Now this is gonna to reply to every color value and you're gonna see immediately it's gonna be a bit harsh. So we're gonna turn the opacity down to maybe about 60 and then open up our levels tab with Command and L. So now you can adjust the kind of shadows, midtones, and highlights and you can balance it how you'd like it to be. So I'm gonna bring the darks in, bring the midtones towards the darks and then bring the light values up slightly. Now you're gonna see it's gonna reveal all of this kind of like gritty noise texture throughout and I think there is good for my balance so far. Now I'm gonna add in one more. I'm gonna add in one more copy scan layer which is a bit more of a gray, like neutral color and I'm gonna set this to either screen or lighter color. I think I'm gonna set it to screen maybe even lighten here, set it to lighten, and I'm gonna drag this opacity right down to maybe 30, so that we can see these horizontal scan lines, but it's not kind of like making the piece too light and gray. So now if I hide and reveal this, you can see the difference there. I might set this down to 25, and just play around, see if screen is better or if lighter color is better. I'm gonna stick with lighten. Now I'm gonna use my action pack here just to add a noise overlay, so I'm gonna press play on this, and it's gonna add a noise overlay layer, which is dynamics. Now, it's created using the camera raw filter, so if you were to apply camera raw filter to the hex code 808080, add noise in this effects panel just here, press OK and set it to overlay. I've shown this in many of my videos before. It's a few simple steps, but it's definitely worth creating this and saving it as an action. Now the last one I'm gonna add is just a paper texture. So I'm gonna paste this in. Now this is from Design Syndrome and it's just this kind of evenly spread, nice kind of contrasting paper texture, which I love to use. Drain this opacity right down, maybe to about 25 or 30 again, hide and reveal this and you can see the effects. So now with all of these added, I'm just gonna open up a curves layer just to kind of adjust the lighting and contrast because we love the texture, but we don't want it to be too flat. So I'm gonna drag our dark values down and our light values near the top slightly up like our highlights. Now this can be really subtle, but the difference it makes is always great. So there we go, even just a subtle line difference if I hide and reveal it, turns it from quite flat and gray to having a lot more of this kind of like popping out contrast. So now our final adjustments added, as I zoom out, this is the final poster design. And if we compare this to the original, I'd say that is pretty close. Obviously I've got a different text placement here, but this works evenly as well. Got a slightly darker orange I use on the, on the original, but that's obviously adjustable. But yeah, you guys let me know what you think. Now guys, as always, thank you so much for making it until the end of the video. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you can learn something or a little trick or two that you can add to your own design arsenal. Now YouTube's gonna recommend you another two videos either side of me just here. So go ahead and watch them and I will see you over there.